I'm Vern Chavis, CDL instructor here at Northeastern Tech in Sherrill, South Carolina. What I'm going to do this morning is go over the pre-trip inspection. Uh, I'm doing this as we do it in South Carolina at DMV. You can watch other videos, but they're from different states here in South Carolina. Uh, the wording's a little different. It's basically all the same, but for you guys here in South Carolina going to take this, you need to know what to say to receive credit for the parts you're describing. And uh, I wanted to go over this and uh, show you how we do it here at Northeastern, how we uh, teach the students to tell the examiner when they take the test. First thing we do as you walk up to the truck, you're noticing that there's no fuel spills, there's no antifreeze on the ground, no kind of puddles or liquids underneath. And uh, as long as she's good and dry, uh, that's what you want. And then the first thing you do is you get in the truck, you want to enter on three points of contact. You either have two feet stable and one hand, or two hands and one foot. So there's no slipping, there's no falling getting in or out of the truck. So if you will, we'll, we'll do that. Then we'll get inside and uh, start with the, three, uh, uh, the end cap. Three points of contact, two hands and a foot, or two feet and one hand, but that's mandatory. All right, as you get in the truck and get in the seat, you have to, this is the pre-trip end cab inspection. You hook your seat belt, the seat belt, properly mounted secure, it locks and unlocks properly. It's not cut, torn, afraid, and the seat belt is adjusted to me. The next thing we do is a safe start. You shake the gear lever, make sure it's in neutral, depress the clutch and start it up. Now, we have our rear view mirrors. They're properly mounted secure. They're clean, clear, not cracked, not broken, and they're adjusted to me. Everybody drives differently. You need to adjust those mirrors, and you have to tell them they're adjusted to me or you don't get credit. We have your emergency equipment. We have our fire extinguisher. It's properly mounted secure, properly charged. We have our Spare fuses, electrical fuses, are in the glove box. And we have our triangles, safety triangles, they're underneath the bunk, all properly mounted secure. We have our windshield. Our windshield is clean, clear, it's not cracked, not broken. No illegal stickers impeding your vision. You have your windshield wipers, they work. Properly mounted secure. The wiper blades, they are not cracked or not dry rotted. They fit firmly against the windshield and our windshield washer works. Now we come back inside the cab. We have our voltmeter. It operates at 14 amps. We got our oil gauge and water temperature gauge. They operate at the factory uh, recommended specifications. We got a primary, secondary air gauge. They operate from 120 to 140 pounds. You have a left signal indicator, right signal indicator, high beam indicator, and four-way flasher indicator. Now, we have our heater. We have our defroster, both of them work. Now, you have to do a tug test. It's all part of your brake check and a leak down check. First thing you do, put it in the lowest gear. You do, you push in your parking brake, 
and we're going to check uh, uh, check the trailer brake. Ease off the clutch, make sure the trailer hold and not let the truck roll. That's all you have to do. Now we depress the trailer brake and we'll check the tractor brakes, the parking brake. Same thing. Okay. Now we do what they call what's a five mile per hour test. Now here at DMV, they usually tell us explain what you're doing because they don't care to be jerked around. So we're going to release the brakes, put it in the lowest gear. You'll let the truck roll five miles per hour, jam on the brake, and turn the wheel loose. That way it doesn't move either direction one way or the other. If that happens, that means your uh, steering brakes uh, are out of adjustment. Now, what we're going to do now, we've used the air up. That was the air governor just popped off. you got to bring it back up to operate and uh, check your air governor. It goes off at 120 to 140 pounds. Since it's gone off, you want to switch it off. We're going to switch it back on so we have power to work the uh, safety buzzer and the safety light, the brake light. We have the ABS light, it comes on, goes off, the light goes off, and the air buzzer uh, went off. Now, we'll put it in lowest gear, we release the brakes. You put it in gear so that it doesn't roll. If you're on a grade, you have to chalk the tires. But uh, put it in lowest gear and release the brakes. Now, what we're going to do is a four pound leak check. The tractor cannot leak more than four pounds in 60 seconds. You apply the brakes, hold it for 60 seconds, ask the examiner to time you. As she times you, you, you make sure it's not, it's not leaking. You don't want it to leak at all. But as long as it doesn't leak more than four pounds in 60 seconds, you can go ahead with your test. If it leaks, then you have to either build it back up, find out what's going on, or they'll give you an incomplete. You take the truck back home, take it to the shop, and get the air leak fixed, and then go back, reschedule your appointment. <clears throat> now this, this part of the test, the leak down test, is the only part that you can fail on then and there. If you late, uh, your brakes don't work or you don't do it correctly, they'll fail you. You have to reschedule, come back seven days later and take your test to go over. I'm not sure where that's 60 seconds, but it's been long enough. It hadn't moved and to go ahead, we're gonna go ahead. Okay, we'll see it didn't leak more than uh, four pounds in 60 seconds. Now the second part of the leak down test, you fan the brakes down, you bleed them down, you pump them uh, to make the warning buzzer and the light come on. And it has to come on before it gets below 55 pounds. Okay, we got our primary gauge at about, about 70 pounds and maybe about 75 or better on the secondary. So the, you hear the buzzer and you also see your warning light. Now we're gonna bleed it down again. We're gonna make these two valves pop out, these protection valves. It's the emergency brake test. When you bleed it down, you lose all your air pressure. The spring side of the brake system will take over, pop your protection valves out, and that's gotta happen between 40 and 20 pounds. So let's bleed it on down. There we go. That, uh, that's about 30 pounds and that one's about probably 35 to 40. So we're in good shape with that. Now, think about what you've done Make sure you've gotten everything. You got the mirrors, safety equipment, windshields, wipers, washers, the gauges, the heater defroster, tug test, your leak down test. Now, blow your city horn, blow your uh, air horn, uh, 
this completes the end cab inspection, you ask the examiner to get out and check your lights. Once she gets out, he gets out, you roll your window down, cut your lights on, let you tell them what you're checking so they'll recognize it. They're not going to ask you to check this one or check that one. You've got to tell them. You ask them to check your turn signal, left turn signal, your right turn signal, your high beam light, your, your cab lights, your marker lights on the side of the truck. When they check all that, then you ask them to check your trailer lights, your tractor lights, the rear of the tractor lights, turn signal, four-way flashers, marker lights and all. And then they'll go to the back and they'll check the tractor and the trailer. If you tell them just check my tractor lights or my trailer lights and don't ask them for both, they will not give you credit for all your lights. So that's what you do. Now we can get outside and do the outside of the cab. All right, that'll do that part. When you get out of the truck, take the keys, show the examiner you've got the keys in your pocket. Now, as you come around to the front of the truck, you look to make sure the truck's sitting level. If it's leaning one side or the other, that's because you've either got a bad, uh, a bad tire, flat tire, you've got a bad suspension, or your load shifted. You want it sitting level. Tell her it's, everything looks good. You point at your cab lights up on top, the cab lights, they're amber in color. You have to tell the color of the lights, whether they're clear or amber or red. These cab lights are amber in color. They're clean, they're clear, they're not cracked, they're not broken, and they're properly mounted secure. Then we go to the driver's side headlight. It's clear, it's clean, it's not cracked. You got a high beam, a low beam, you got a marker light, a turn signal, and a four-way flasher. And this is amber in color. Now we go around to the side uh, and go to our landing gear. That's because our trailer has the landing gear on the passenger side. Usually it's on the right, but on our truck, it's on the left side. We have the landing gear here on the trailer. It's properly mounted secure. All the bolts are present and tight, all the braces, all the structure is not bent, it's not cracked, it's not damaged. It works properly, it rolls down. It rolls up and the handle's in the, in the proper lock position. Now with our truck, we have an exhaust we don't have a stack. We have an exhaust, but it's all the same thing where you got a stack or an exhaust. That's it underneath the cab. It's bolted on with clamps. It's not bent, it's not cracked, and there are no holes in it, it's not damaged. If it had holes or cracks in it, they'd be soot trails on it. And that's the very same thing for a stack too. It bolts up with clamps and brackets. Everything's gotta be tight, it's gotta be properly mounted secure, and there can't be holes or cracks in it. Now we'll go under the hood. Now, under the hood you have three things on the passenger side and then the rest of the inspections on the driver's side. We have our washer reservoir for our windshield washers. Anything with a liquid, it cannot leak. So we have the solution in it, it's properly mounted secure, the cap's on tight. We have the alternator. The alternator, properly mounted secure, bolts are in tight, it's belt driven, the wires are on tight, there's not any cracks or it's not damaged or anything on the alternator. And the drive belt for the uh, alternator, it can't be no more than three quarters of an inch play. It can't be cut, torn, afraid. It can't have any loose fibers and it can't show any signs of wear. And you have to tell them there's no signs of wear and no loose threads or you won't receive credit for that belt. And you have to tell them it's the alternator belt. This is a serpentine belt on this truck, and uh, it works everything. But if your belt, if your truck has uh, V-belts, there'll be two or three belts on it, 
So as you go to the other side of the engine, as you identify parts, you have to tell it's belt driven and identify the belt once again. If you just tell them one time about the belt, you don't get credit for the parts. Now we go to the driver's side. How you doing? Good, good. Now we start up front with the radiator. It's got a liquid in it so it can't leak. It's properly mass secure and it doesn't leak. Then we have the reservoir for the radiator. The cap's on tight, the liquid is in at the proper level, it's not leaking, it's properly mass secure. Then to the water hose. We have a water hose here, one here. These hoses are rubber. Anything that's rubber is ABC. No abrasions, bulges, and cuts. The water hose, there's no abrasions, bulges, and cuts. It's mounted on with clamps and the clamps are on tight. The water hose goes to the water pump. The water pump is belt driven. Once again, it's got a belt on it. And the water pump belt is part of this serpentine belt. If it, you had the V-belts, you have to tell her once again that it can't have no more than uh, one half, uh, three quarter inch play. Can't have any loose threads or show signs of wear. Uh, from the water pump down to the power steering reservoir. All right, it operates at the proper level. The cap's on tight. It's properly mass secure, not leaking. From there, we go to the dipstick. The dipstick, you pull it out, let them know, wipe it off. The engine's not running to check the oil. Uh, pull it out, you make sure you wipe it off. The oil has to be above the ad mark. Uh, there, we'll follow the power steering hose back to the power steering pump and the air compressor. They're bolted onto the side of the engine. They're at the back of the engine, so they can't be belt driven. They have to be gear driven. You have to tell them both are gear driven. Okay, both of them have fluids. Uh, the air compressor has air, so it's under pressure. The power steering has fluid, so it can't leak. Neither one can leak. They're both gear driven. They're properly mount secure. The bolts are on tight. They're all present. From there, we come out to the steering shaft. The steering shaft, it uh, properly mounts secure, it's not bent, cracked, or damaged. It's bolted on with U-joints. Uh, they're clean, free of debris, and they're properly greased. Down to the steering box, the pitman arm, the drag link, and the tie rod end. Now, the power steering box has fluid, so it can't be leaking. All the bolts are present and tight. They're all properly mounted secure, they're not bent, cracked, or damaged, and they're mounted on with carter, pe uh, carter pins and castle nuts. Now that's the steering, we'll go inside to the suspension. We have leaf springs. The leaf springs, properly mounted secure, they're not cracked, bent, or damaged. Uh, they're not shifted, they're properly aligned. They bolt on with U-bolts. The U-bolts are present and tight. The springs bolt on front and rear mounts, and they're in with the bolts. The bolts are in tight, and the, pro and the mounts are properly mounted secure. They're not bent, cracked, or damaged. From the spring to the shock, shock bolts on at both ends, properly mounted secure. It's not leaking. It's a hydraulic shock. There would be trails of grease on it and oil if it was leaking. Now, uh, from the shock to the brake line. The brake line's rubber, ABC. No abrasions, bulging cuts, bolted on tight at both ends, and it's not leaking. From there, to the slack, uh, brake chamber, slack adjuster, push rod. Now, the slack adjuster, uh, slack adjuster and push rod can't have more than one inch travel. The brake chamber can't be bent, cracked, or damaged and not leaking. This, this clamp has to be on tight. It can't be loose and it can't be missing. Uh, and the way we check it, the uh, travel on the uh, push rod and slack adjuster, you release the brakes and you can pull it by hand and you can't pull no more than one inch. Okay, from the brake chamber, slack adjuster will go to the brake pads. The brake pad or brake lining, whichever one you like to call it, can't be less than one quarter inch thickness. And what you have to tell them, it cannot be dangerously thin. 
the number, the thickness, it ain't a big deal, but it has to be not dangerously thin, what you tell the examiner. It's got to be properly mounted secure. It's got to be clear debris. You can't have any grease or oil on the brake. The brake drum, properly mounted secure, not cracked, bent, or broken because it's metal, and it's got to be clear debris. It's properly mounted secure. Then you check your tires. You come out to the tire, both side walls. It's clear debris, ABC. There's no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. It's evenly worn. No less than 430 seconds tread depth on your steer tire, your tractor tire, your, your drive tires, and your trailer tire is 230 seconds. You can wear those down a little bit further than these steers, but your steers have to be at least 430 seconds of an inch. Like I say, they're evenly worn, no cuts and abrasions, down to your wheel. There's no cracks in the wheel, there's no illegal wells, and you better take gloves because you're going to get dirty. Uh, they're properly mounted secure. The bolts are on tight. All your lugs touch all your lugs. They're on tight. If they were loose, they would be rust trails on the wheel or shiny threads. And the wheel has got to be bolted tight to the wheel. Uh, this is a hub seal. All the bolts are in there, tight. Present and tight, not leaking. This thing has a sight gauge. You can look in it and uh, Make sure it's got the right amount of fluid in there. It's at the proper level because this thing's got a notch on it, you can tell it. Now, that, once again, take your time. Make sure you don't leave anything off. Uh, that should get it under the hood. And the way I like to teach it, you start at the front and go to the back and work your way out. That way, when you got the part behind you, you've talked about it, you've just uh, uh, told about it. And uh, you can forget it, you don't have to worry about it. If you go from front to back to front and go like that, you're going to forget parts. You're going to skip stuff. You're not going to tell them the right description of the part. And you're going to mess up on your points. Now, since we're out from under the hood, we can forget that and start down the truck. This is a marker light. It's amber in color. Bolts are present and tight. Properly mounted secure. It's clean and it's clear and it's not cracked nor broken. We talked about the rear view mirror, now we gotta talk about the mount. We have the rear view mirror, the bolts are present and tight, and it's properly mounted secure. Now we have steps. These steps, the bolts are present and tight. Uh, it's clear, it's clean, clear debris. Uh, you don't want anybody falling in and out, getting in and out the truck. Now we have our door lock. The door lock works, it's properly mounted secure. The door, it opens and closes properly. We have a rubber seal around this door, inside and, and uh, inside the cab and on the inside the door. This do uh, is sealed, uh, uh, it's a rubber seal, so it can't have uh, any abrasions, bulges, and cuts. Anything that's rubber, hoses, anything that's rubber is ABC, so that's, that makes it easy for you to remember. You got these seals, they're properly mounted secured and no cuts and abrasions. The door is bolted on with hinges. The hinges are properly mounted secured. The hinges are bolted on with bolts. The bolts are present and tight. That gets us out of the truck. Now to the fuel tank. You can see there are no puddles under the tank. It's not leaking. The tank bolts on with straps. They're both straps are here, properly mounted secure and tight. The fuel cap, it's tight and it's not leaking. Now we have these catwalk steps. Same thing, the bolts are present and tight. The steps are clear, clear debris. You don't want to slip and fall getting up and down on the back of the truck. You got your catwalk, catwalk, the bolts are present and tight and it's clear debris. The catwalk steps, it's on tight, the bolts are present and tight. It's clear debris, you don't want to slip and fall back here. Uh, we have two reflectors on each side. They're clear, they're properly mounted secure, uh, and like I say, they're clear in color. From there, we got the airlines. The airlines, they bolt onto the truck. They're rubber, so there's no abrasions, bulging, and cuts. You don't want them leaking. You got a power cord comes out the back of the truck here and the trailer where it hooks at, uh, where the power cord plugs in. They're on with safety latches. 
the power cord. It's it's got a rubber coating. It uh it can't be any abrasions, bulging, and cuts. This thing has electrical wires inside. If it's cut and raw or or, or uh, messed up in any way, the, the wires can touch inside and short. Now the airlines they hook and unhook on the trailer with a glad hand. That's a glad hand. They have a rubber seal. The rubber seal, no cuts and abrasions, and it doesn't leak. You got to make sure your airlines don't leak. Everything's plugged in there. Okay, back over here, we have the drive shaft. The drive shaft's properly mounted, secure. It's not bent, cracked, or damaged. It's bolted on it uh, uh, with U joints. The U joints are clear of debris and properly greased. Okay, underneath there on the rear end, we have a stabilizer bar. Stabilizer bar bolts on at both ends. Not bent, cracked, or damaged. Properly mounted, secure. Out to the uh, the frame, the frame of the tractor. It can't be bent, cracked, or damaged. Can't have any illegal wells on it. Properly mounted, secure. Strong enough to support your loads. All your framework's got to be strong enough to support this load of this truck and trailer. Uh, from there to your brake line. Once again, your brake line is bolted on at both ends. Properly mounted, secure. No cuts and abrasions and not leaking. The brake chamber, slack adjuster, push rod. Once again, the very same thing on all axles. Uh, the brake chamber can't be leaking. Uh, the clamps have to be present and tight. Can't be missing the clamps. Uh, properly mounted secure. Brake chamber, slack adjuster, push rod. Properly mounted secure, not bent, cracked, or damaged. With no more than one inch travel on the, on the push rod. Out to the... Uh, the brake lining, the brake pad, same thing, no less than one quarter inch in uh, thickness, not dangerously thin, properly mounted, secure, uh, uh, clear debris. Uh, then to the uh, the brake drum, not being cracked or damaged, properly mounted, secure, clear debris. To the uh, tires. These are bud tires, they, they, they dual tires on bud wheels. These t the wheels are budded together where they bolted up at. You can't have any crack whatsoever. They got to be bolted up tight to one another. Uh, there can't be any debris between the tires. You can't have any rocks or pieces of wood that got wedged in. You run over them with the truck, you don't want nothing wedged between these tires. So they have to be clear of debris. Once again, the tires are ABC, no abrasions, bulges, and cuts. Like I say, your drive tires and your trailer tires have to have at least two thirty seconds of an inch tread depth. They have to be evenly worn, no cuts and abrasions, no bulges on the tires. Back out to the wheel once again. The wheel cannot be uh, cracked, have no illegal wells. And I forgot on the first tire. And you can, you can tell them, you repeat it, but you let them know that tire's pumped to 100 pounds of pressure and you check it with a valve stem. The valve stem has, is on there, it's bolted on tight. It has a cap on it and we checked air pressure with an air gauge. So here we are, we have the air gauge, uh, the valve stem right here. It's bolted on tight with a cap. The same thing, the lugs, they're bolted on tight. They're not loose. Uh, if it was loose, you'd see rust trails on the uh, wheel, and you'd see shiny threads on there. This is an axle seal. It's an axle here. It's a uh, wheel seal, hub seals on the front and the rear. But these are axle seals on the tractor. The bolts are there, properly mounted, secure. They're all tight, and it's not leaking grease. And now we got to go back in for this thing. It's control arm and the co control uh, control arm mount and your control arm. It's just like the spring, except we have an air ride cab. If it was a spring ride, it'd be springs just like under the front end. Uh, this thing bolts on with U-bolts. The bolts are present and tight. The control arm is not uh, bent, cracked, or damaged. The control arm mount, all the bolts are present and tight, and it's not bent, cracked, or damaged. Now, let's see, we got the wheels. We got the drive line frame. Okay, now we go to the fifth wheel. 
This is our fifth wheel. Ah. Right here. The fifth wheel. All the bolts are present and tight on the fifth wheel mount. They're none loose. It's not bent, cracked, or damaged. The fifth wheel platform is the framework that boasts the fifth wheel itself that lets it pivot. It's the platform. It's properly mounted, secure. It's not bent, cracked, or damaged. And then the fifth wheel, the platform, skid plate, or platform, is properly mounted, secure, properly greased. It fits tight to the bottom of the trailer, which is called the apron. There's no gaps in there. There's no daylight. If you do something's wrong, it's not sitting level. But it's got to be bolted. Uh, it's got to be locked in tight with no no gap in there. And uh, this is the fifth wheel lock, the hand locking handle. It's got to be locked in the proper position. Now our fifth wheel is an air slide. So uh, the air slide. The hoses don't leak, it's properly mounted secure. The air slide, the locks, the locking pins, they have to be locked into locking pins, uh, into locking position, to correct locking position. Okay, now, oh, and the airbag. We have an air ride system, we have an airbag. So that airbag is uh, properly mounted secure at both ends. It's rubber, there's no cuts and abrasions. Uh, let's see, we are doing the, uh, let's see, fifth wheel air ride. Now, got to get under this thing. Ha! Oh, wait. Uh-oh. Now, underneath here, you have to point and tell them the locking jaws of the fifth wheel Securely locked around the kingpin and it's properly greased. You have reflectors, you have lights back here. You got to describe your lights. These are reflectors, they're red in color, they're properly mounted secure, not bent, cracked, or damaged. You have a clear reverse light, properly mounted secure, not cracked or damaged. You got tail lights, they're red in color, four way flashers, turn signals, and brake lights. Properly mounted secure and uh, like I say, red in color. We have the mud flaps, proper distance off the ground. Uh, all the bolts are present and tight. No cuts and abrasions in the mud flaps. Y'all have to bear with old man just a second. You don't remember them days, do you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, now we'll go back to the front of this trailer. We talked about the airlines and the, the power cord. Now, this is the nose of the trailer or the header board. This has to be secure enough to hold the load. There's no holes in it. There's no missing rivets in the trailer, in the, in the nose. It has marker lights at the top. The marker lights are clear. They're not cracked, not broken. Amber in color. They're properly mounted secure. Now we come to the side of the trailer. The very same thing as the nose. No holes in it, no missing rivets. Properly mounted, secure, uh, strong enough to support the load. You have reflector tape, DOT reflector tape down the side of the trailer. From there, we come here underneath the trailer. Underneath the trailer, we have uh, cross members. These cross members, they're properly mounted, secure. They support the load of the trailer. They're strong enough to support the loader to try to, they're not any missing, not bent, cracked, or damaged, and all are properly mounted secure. From there to this marker light. This marker light's amber in color, properly mounted secure, and it's nothing but a, a marker light. This intermittent light, properly mounted secure, amber in color, this four way flasher, a turn signal, and a marker light. From there, you got the air hoses. The air hoses work the brake system. They're rubber, there's no cuts and abrasions. Uh, it's not leaking. They're held up by a spring and they're not dragging on the ground or anything. They're proper height off the ground. From there, back underneath again. Under here, 
We have the brake lines once again. They're ABC, no abrasions, bulging cuts, not leaking, properly mounted secure to the brake chamber, slack adjuster, and the push rod. The brake chamber cannot be leaking, can't have a loose or missing clamp, can't be bent, cracked, or damaged. Properly mounted secure. The slack adjuster, push rod, it's not bent, cracked, or damaged. No more than one, mm, excuse me, one inch travel and uh, properly mount secure. From there to the spring mount. The spring mount, properly mount secure, not being cracked or damaged. Supports the spring and the stabilizer bar. The spring, same as front, uh, not being cracked or damaged, not shifted, uh, properly aligned, bolt on with U-bolts, the bolts are tight and present. Stabilizer bar, bolted on at both ends, bolts are present and tight, not bent, cracked, or damaged. Now, from the uh, there to the brake pad once again, not dangerously thin, not less than one quarter inch of uh, uh, thickness, clear of debris, properly mounted secure. The brake drum, not bent, cracked, or damaged, properly mounted secure, clear of debris. Out to the, oh, let's do this first. This is a sliding tandem. This is the locking handle for our sliding tandem. It's in the proper position, locked in the proper position. And underneath, we have the locking pins for the sliding tandem. They're locked in the proper position. Out to the tires. No cuts and abrasions, properly mounted secure. Evenly worn, at least two thirty seconds of an inch tread depth. There's no debris between the tires and the bud wheels are butted up together. There's no gap or crack between the wheels. Now, the wheel, once again, there's no cracks in it. There's no illegal wells on it. Uh, properly mounted secure. The bolts are all present and tight. The lugs, uh, if they were loose, they'd be rust trails on the wheel and you see shiny threads. The wheel has a valve stem, it's bolted on tight with an air uh, cap, a valve stem cap, uh, and pumped to 100 pounds of pressure, and we check it with a gauge. We have the, the hub seal. You can see this one better. It's clear. You can see the fluid inside. All the bolts are present and tight, and it's not leaking. Uh, let's see. Fifth wheel, uh, sliding tandem, pins, locking handle. Uh, the tire, that ought to do it for that. The mud flap, once again, bolts are present and tight. It's not torn or damaged. Proper height off the ground. To the marker light, this one is red in color. Properly mounted secure, not cracked or damaged. And this is a reflector. It's properly mounted secure and it's red in color. Uh, around to the back, we have the uh, tail lights. Tail lights are red in color, properly mounted secure. They're not, they're, they're not cracked or damaged. Uh, you have tail lights, turn signals, four-way flashers, and brake lights. Over to the marker lights. They're red in color, properly mounted secure, not cracked or damaged. To a tag light, it's clear in color, properly mounted secure. And uh, clear in color, and it's not cracked or damaged. Down to the bumper, safety bumper. It's not bent, cracked or damaged, properly mounted secure. My trailer doors, there are no holes in the doors, no cracks in the doors. They're mounted with hinges, just like the front door. Got hinges, all the bolts are present and tight, properly mounted secure. This door is a uh, sw uh, swinging door. It opens with a handle. It has a rubber seal inside. No cuts and abrasions on the rubber seal. It opens and closes properly. Uh, let's see. DOT tape on the door. No holes. That completes the end cabins of the, the pre trip inspection. Now one thing here in South Carolina, we don't have to inspect and describe each axle. 
we, dri uh, we tail the steering axle, one of your drive axles, and one of your trailer axles. You don't have to repeat it five times, you have to repeat it three times. So that, that helps out. But that's, that's the way we do it from the DMV. Uh, uh, when we have our test, our road test, and if there's any way possible, anybody have any questions, need a question or want to discuss something about the pre-trip, what we do at DMV, how we go through it, give us a call. Be glad to talk with you about it, anything. Call here at Northeastern. Uh, Vern Chavis, CDL instructor, 843-921-6975 uh, is my number. Give me a call, I'll help you any way I can. Thank you very much.